your courts of praise right now. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's it. Clap your hands, all you people. And shout unto God with the voice of triumph. tells us to lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Can we just lift our hands? Can we just lift our hands to the Lord right now and worship Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord God. We worship you today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name. I want to pray right now that His kingdom would come in this place. I want to pray right now that His will would be done in this place. Yes. I would like to pray that the weights of this world would not weigh heavy on us and we would have a heavenly vision for this service today. Not what we want to be done, but what we want God to do. In Jesus' name. God, I love you, Lord. And I pray, God, that your children This is not connecting. Still for us in this service, God, I pray that it happens. I pray that you will bring down all to the Lord. Jesus, 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 open our minds, God. Jesus, your word, God. Open our spirits, God. Open our hearts, God. Right now, we pray that every need would be supplied today, God. We pray that no matter what the need is, that you would be the supplier of God, that every person would be able to place their faith in you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, if you have a spiritual need today, if you need more of God, if you need the Holy Ghost, God is here today. You can get that today. If you have a financial need, if you have a physical need, if you have a mental need, whatever you need, God is here today in this place. Lord, we pray right now that you would just help us today. God, we pray that you would cover every need today, that you would supply every need, Lord, that you would help us to have faith to believe that you can do that for us. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, Oh, as we forgive those who have sinned against us, we need to make this personal. Forgive me my sin. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, all make this personal. Oh, create in us a clean heart, Lord. Oh, and a new spirit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Transform our minds, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. and praise God for yes. the freedom and liberty yes. that is here today. Yes.
from today. Yes. Yes.
cures cancer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Cancer is a big thing out there, and we all deal with it in some form or fashion, whether it's us personally or our family members or our friends. But God heals cancer. Amen. Yes. And we want to give him all the praise for that today. He deserves all the glory for it. And so let's right now, let's go to him in prayer with these needs that I've mentioned. We need to remember our community also, that they would have revelation of the truth. And as I've said before, that is happening. Like I said a while ago, God is faithful when you pray to him and ask him, he will answer. Let's go to him and pray right now for these needs. Lord, we pray, God, right now that you would just move and work in every need, in every life, God, today that's here. No matter what the need is, God, we pray right now that you would answer it, Lord, that you would come and that you would just be the provider for that need right now, Lord. We pray, God, that you would comfort my uncle as he's dealing with this problem with his knee being fractured right now, Lord. I pray that you would give him strength, God, to get through it, Lord, and help my aunt right now, Lord, as she needs your help, God, to help him through this time. Lord, we pray right now for Naaman Wilkerson, Lord, that you would move in his heart, God, that you would speak to him right where he's at today, Lord. Help him to hear your voice, God, so that he could come to you, Lord, that he could be saved, God. He can have all his needs met spiritually, Lord, through you. In the name of Jesus, right now, we pray for our community, Lord. We pray that every person in every church in this community, Lord, would have revelation of your truth, that they would preach your truth, God, that people all over this, this community, throughout the state even, would be affected by what's going on right here in Pocico. We pray that revelation would just begin to flow, God, that it would be accepted, that it would be preached, and it would be taught, Lord, that people would hear your truth, and they would come to you, God, and they would find salvation that would take them to heaven someday. In the name of Jesus, we pray all of these things. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, God. We lift you up, and we praise you, God, for what you're going to do.
just into the ground. He goes about his business. He goes about his daily life. It says that he sleeps and he rises every single day. And the seed just does what the seed is supposed to do. The vegetation just begins to do what it is naturally supposed to do, which is to grow. As I was preparing for this, and as I felt God begin to speak to me, I began to think about an interesting phenomenon that always intrigues me. That is something that happens on the roads. You see, like many of you, I drive a lot. Maybe I know some of you work in Dexter or Dudley or Poplar Bluff or around, and you drive every single day the same way. Well, some of you won't. You're going to change routes, hopefully, tomorrow, or you're going to be in trouble because WW is going to be under construction. But we get so used to the same path, the same road. I drive on 60 a lot, and it always interests me that when they decide to close down a few lanes for a little while. They'll put the cones up and they'll shut it down. And for some reason, they feel like the cones need to be there at least two weeks before they're going to work. <laughs> because that's what they do. It's there and the road's closed to one lane and nobody's there and nobody's there. And you think, well, they've just forgotten about this. But it's interesting to me because... After a couple of days of driving by the same place, driving by those cones, I start to notice that something is growing in the road. And I notice that there are weeds that begin to just push through the concrete. And as a few more days pass because they're still not doing anything, it almost looks like you have full-grown bushes in the middle of the road. Because nobody has to tell that we, it's time for you to grow. In fact, if it were not for the cars going over it, it would remain in that state of growth. Because the only thing that is hindering it is when a car drives over it. And as long as it is blocked off, there is growth that takes place. Today I'm here to tell you that we are in a season where we are pushing through some things. Yes. You see, for a while things have kind of ran over, but we are in a season right now where the vegetation is growing. Some of it nobody even planted. Here's a man, he says, I cast a little bit of seed on the ground. And I just went about my business. But it wasn't just seed that was planted. But it was something that would bear fruit. And it would grow because that is the natural desire of the seed to grow. And so the earth will do its thing and the seed will do its thing and they will bring forth something that is green poking through. I believe today that I'm here to tell you that God is about to push through some things in our lives. Yes. And it doesn't matter what the concrete might be telling you that surrounds it. Right. Something is going to grow up out of yes. it. Something is about to push through because yes. God is preparing yes. to move. Yes. Thank you, God. Paul wrote to the Romans that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Pushing through is the purpose. And I know then that God has ordained and that God is pushing us to go through because we are not here for destruction, but we are here for growth. We are here to push through. And there is nothing going to hinder what God has ordained. Because God is moving. God is working. God has declared some things to you. And I'm just here today to tell you that what God has promised, God will fulfill. There are some people that have been praying for family members that are lost. 
Just keep praying yes, because yes. God is moving. Yes, yes. You've got some situations with co-workers. Just keep praying yes. because God is moving. You've got friends that are in dire situations, but just keep praying because God is moving. And you're going to begin to see a little push through yes. amongst the concrete because God has ordained it. Yes, amen. Thank God you. is working. He Thank is. God is working. The Bible tells another story similar to Mark 4 that we read as our scripture text. But Jesus is speaking again in a parable and he says, Behold, there is a sower. This is somebody that just plants and he went forth to sow or to plant a seed. And when he was sowing, some seeds fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them up. And some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some brought forth a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear? Let him hear. The disciples, they're wondering what's going on, and Jesus begins to speak to them. He says, why? They're saying, Jesus, why are you speaking in these parables? What are you really trying to say to us here? Jesus answered them and said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables. And this is what Jesus is explaining to them. Because they see, see not, and though they can hear, they hear not. And they don't understand what's taking place. Verse 14 says, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah's, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they would have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should hear them. But notice what verse number 16 says, because I love it, and it speaks to us today. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men shall have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and casteth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath no root in himself, but endureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. And he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Verse number 23 says, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some as a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Jesus is telling the disciples in this moment, Cast seed wherever you can cast seed, and the earth will take care of everything else. But allow those that have ears the opportunity to hear. But as I was preparing and as I was spending time with the Lord, my mind kept going to those places in the road where it has sprung up a living plant, but it is surrounded by concrete. And I felt the Lord begin to speak to me and declare to me a few things. 
You see, we are very concerned with the surface. But I felt the Lord tell me the surface does not actually determine the soil. You see, we are here in the heart of farm country. And we drive down the road, and it does not matter which direction you would go when you leave here. You will pass a field where a farmer has prepared the land. And you will notice that there is growth taking place on all of those fields right now. And somewhere along the line, we have believed that that is what good ground looks like. Because it is good ground. But I felt the Lord tell me that just because something on the surface does not look like good ground, does not mean that there is not a harvest there. Because you can see that plant in the middle of the road. But underneath the concrete is a vibrant soil. And if the roots can just get deep enough, they can change the landscape of everything that is around it. Amen. You will notice that there are, there are sidewalks that are busted up from the roots of a tree, right. not because of the concrete, but because of the soil underneath it. Right. So when Jesus is speaking here and he says that the seed might go into a stony place, He's not talking about a place where there's just a, a few rocks on top of the dirt. But what he's talking about is, is a deep level of rock where there is no place for the roots to attach to the soil. He's not talking about just any rocks scattered abroad. Otherwise, this old parking lot out here wouldn't be covered in weeds every year. Because it is not just that there are rocks, but it is what are the rocks sitting on top of? Right? right. That's good preaching. And I recognize that there are some people that you might witness to and you might pray to about, and you might just say to yourself, Boy, I tell you what, if God ever finally gets a hold of them, it'll be something. I know I'm not the only one that's ever heard somebody say that before. Because <laughs> we say that. Or we hear that. Because there are some people that believe, well, I'm going to pray for them, but they're pretty far out there. But I just believe that God is declaring there is some soil there. Yes. Hey, what you see on the surface, it might look dirty, it might look rocky, but once we're all of us, because every one of us was born yes. in the life of sin. Yes. Because we are flesh. Uh -huh. But what I need to know and what you need to know is that what's underneath that dirty, rocky surface is a rich soil that is ripe for the sea. Yes. Hallelujah. God is declaring it. God is declaring it. That these words are true. Second Corinthians says, For the promises of God in him, being Jesus, are yea, and in him are a man unto the glory of God by us. God is moving. God is working in your life yes. and in your family yes. and in your job. And God just wants you to know that he is in the midst of you yes. and them. Yes. And he is working. Yes, he is. And he is moving. Yes. And you just need to get ready because some things are about to push through the surface. I know this is true because 1 Thessalonians declares that the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. He is not one to mince his words. He's not one to say one thing and go do something else. But he is one to say this is the way and that is the way. 
And God has declared that we just need to go out and spread a little seed. And it don't matter where it falls. If it falls in the stone, then it falls in the stone. If it falls in the ditch, it falls in the ditch. But don't allow what the surface looks like to prevent you from casting a little bit of seed. God is moving. God is moving in our midst, even in this moment. God is doing great things. Thank you, Lord. There are things that are happening in the spirit that we cannot see unless our eyes are fixed on Jesus. Because just like he was telling the disciples, some people got eyes, but they can't see. And some people got ears, but they can't hear. And their heart, it won't let them understand. But let me just tell you, if you open up your eyes and affix them on Jesus, then you will begin to see that God is moving. God is working. Because God is in it. God is in it. And if God is in it, don't let me be the hindrance. Don't let me be what stops it. Don't let my thinking be what prevents the seed from springing forth. I can't say, well, that don't look like a very good place to cast a little seed. We need to sprinkle it everywhere we go. Reminds me of the old, the old story of, of Johnny Appleseed. How he just began to go around casting down apple seeds everywhere he went. And then suddenly you just started seeing these apple trees sprouting up all over the place. That's what the church needs to do. But more importantly, that's what I need to do. And that's what you need to do. We need to declare some things in the spirit. We need to begin to recognize that God is working in our favor. Yes. God is not setting us out for failure. God is not putting us on a path where we would be embarrassed or right. knocked down. Hey, that don't mean that things aren't going to happen, but what it does mean is that God's in it. Yes. And God's ordained it. And yes. we might as well have the faith to believe that something's going to push through. Right. Yes. Hey, I want you to know, you've got lost kids, just keep waiting. Just keep praying. They're going to push through. Yes. Hallelujah. Those family members, just keep praying. It's on the horizon. I tell you, the seed is there. Sometimes the prayer we need to pray is just a prayer of covering. God, just cover them for a little while longer. Just cover them. Just protect them. Because that's what they need. They just need a covering to give that seed enough time to begin to sprout up. Yes. I believe it. Hallelujah. Oh, is there anybody out there that, that believes it? Yes. Yes. Is there anybody that can see it? Yes. That God is moving. That God is working. I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is yes. doing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about you, Lord. If you'd stand with me. The pastor's going to come. He's going to play something. I know this has been this has been simple, and there's there's not a lot, but it's the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God's trying to get it in somebody's head today that he's not done yet. Right. I know that the, that the coming of the Lord is soon. Mm -hmm. yes. But let me be real honest with you. I don't think it's tonight because I believe there are some seeds out there that are just on the cusp of breaking through the ground. Yes. And I know that God is faithful. That he's going to move on those things. Because God's promised you some things. And he's not going to abandon them now. God's going to move. 
so right now. I think it would be all right if we would just take a few moments and if we would just pray and, and we would just declare the promises of the Lord. Because they really are yea and amen. God really is moving. What God has said, He will do. Yes. We need to declare His promises. We need to reaffirm our faith in Him today. We need to know that God is moving in them. That that seed is growing. That God is moving. We also need to pray for some coverings over some people. Hey, they might be astray right now, but just give it a few, few moments. Just let God move in that situation a little bit longer. Pray that God would cover them. God would protect them. God would draw them. I believe it. I believe it. Can we go to Him in prayer? Can we receive these things from Him? Oh, how good you are, God. Oh, how good you are. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Let's pray. what I sense, that the Lord is moving in this season in a special way. It may not be the same way that he's moved in another season. It may be that pushing through kind of move of God. It's that kind of move that you have to determine, yeah, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to push through. I, I want to be used of God. I mean, you've got to be sensitive to the spirit to look past the concrete, look past the rock and, and see the fresh life that's pushing through. Amen. I think you're here today. I know you're here. You've heard the word. I want every person that wants to be used of God to just step out to an aisle where you're at. We can still social distance and do that. Just find your own little spot out in the aisle. It's just a step of faith. That's what coming to the altar is, is a step of faith. Amen. If you want to be used of the Lord, this is beautiful. Sometimes we don't really know what God's doing. It's, it's under the surface. It hasn't sprung forth yet. The seeds already been planted, but it's got to get through all that concrete and all that obstacle. But we're in that season. We've got to be sensitive to the Spirit. Would you lift your hands right now? Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I want to be used of you. Whatever you're doing right now, whoever you're saving, whoever you're moving in their lives, God, that I don't yet recognize and I can't see it with my eyes, but I can see it right now as I look through eyes of faith. I want you to use me, Lord. I want you to use me, Lord. Come on, open yourself up right now to be used of God. 
turn around and look and see where the needs are right now. Now we don't want Lord, the Lord to move in these needs without us being involved in it. We want to be in the middle of it. Amen. And God wants to use us. Amen. So would you just turn toward those that have their hand lifted up and stretch your hand out to them right now. And I want you to pray in faith in the name of Jesus that every need would be supplied right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we believe for your healing touch. We believe for your saving touch. We believe for your move of deliverance right now, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Move, Lord, for my neighbor. Minister healing to them right now. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, use us right now to minister to needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Come on, let's let the Lord move right now. Hallelujah. Let God refresh you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be renewed in the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Worship you, Father. We thank you for this service. We thank you for all that you've done in our hearts today. And I thank you for your precious word, God, that your servant delivered to us. I don't take it lightly today, Lord. I take it to heart. I needed that word today. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for giving me eyes to see and ears to hear your word today. Hallelujah. I give you thanks. God. Praise God. What a beautiful time in the presence of God today. God bless you. Amen. Today, and don't forget these important announcements, of course, the business meeting on Tuesday, and after the business meeting, uh, there will be youth praise team practice, so don't forget that. The youth will be doing the worship service this Thursday. Brother Reagan's going to be ministering the Word, and uh, I know he's been studying and praying, and he shared a couple little thoughts with me, and I thought, man, that's going to be good. I wish I had thought of that. Amen. Isn't it amazing how full the Bible is? You can preach the same scriptures over and over again, and then God will show you something you never saw before. Amen. And uh, we have that, that blessing to be able to partake of the Word of God, and I'm so thankful for that. So don't forget our services this week. A Tuesday, the business meeting. Um, for those of you that are members, please, please be here uh, for that voting session, if at all possible. And then on Thursday, we'll start at 7 o'clock. We look forward to what the Lord's going to do. We look forward to bringing some exciting news to the whole church family here before long. And you're going to be excited about what the Lord is doing. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you on Tuesday or Thursday.